Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I have an awesome video for you today because we are doing a very, very simple, easy to follow overclocking guide for the 14600K, the brand new Core i5 processor from Intel. Well, it's not brand new, still fairly new. It's one of their latest uh, processors. And uh, what we're gonna be doing with it today is reducing its voltage and increasing the frequency using just a couple of settings. So I really wanna stress this is a very simple overclocking guide. If you've never overclocked before, even if you've never been in the BIOS before, you will be able to follow this guide today to get some excellent performance results and lower temperatures for your hot running Core i5. 14600K. I'd like to thank MSI for sponsoring today's video as well. So if you own an MSI motherboard, you're gonna be able to follow this guide to the letter and have a perfectly safe run through the BIOS. The settings that we're using though are perfectly safe to use on any motherboard. I just can't, any other motherboard I should say, I just can't guarantee that they'll be 100% stable on every motherboard out there. So if you've got an MSI motherboard, should be absolutely fine. If you've got something else, you can plumb in these settings, see what happens during the stress testing. And uh, if it works, great. If not, you might wanna increase the voltage a little bit or rein in the frequency to get it stable. You can use these as a baseline, uh, but nothing more. If you've got an MSI motherboard though, as I said, you're absolutely laughing. So what we're gonna be doing today is just playing around, trying to make the processor run cooler and faster. And what we're doing this time compared to previous guides that I've done is focusing on three particular points of interest. So one is just tweaking one setting that is going to off make your processor run a lot cooler than it does at stock speed. We then have another option where those of you with uh, basically high-end air cooling or all-in-one liquid coolers or even custom liquid cooling can focus on apply a slightly higher overclock and a slightly higher voltage still running way cooler than it does at stock speed but getting a slightly higher performance result if you have a standard air cooler that maybe costs you 30 or 40 bucks and you don't want to over or you don't want to overclock quite as high we then have a less uh, a less sort of overclocking option where we're gonna be doing a uh, sli uh, slightly reduced overclock with a much lower voltage and you'll be getting even lower results there. So something from ev for everyone today, if you just wanna run it, make you get your Core i5 4600K running cooler, if you want to go all out and get hit 5.6 gigahertz and you've got the cooling to match, then you can do that. But if you've got a modest air cooler um, that costs you less than 40 bucks, say, then we have an option for you there as well. So don't forget to use the timestamps in the description down below to point yourself at the right point of this video uh, where you can start to follow this guide. Now, I should stress that this is not a complicated overclocking guide. It's not massively in-depth. It is designed specifically for people that have never either never, never been in the BIOS before or never overclocked before to follow. And that is exactly what the comments on my previous simple overclocking guides point at, that they just want these simple overclocking guides. They are very, very useful. I personally want to get as many people into PC uh, overclocking and PC and being PC enthusiasts as possible because that helps me, that helps my whole industry. So that's, that's why I'm here. I want to help you guys uh, doing this. And uh, this video today, you but you'll be tweaking probably just a couple of settings, not dozens of settings, it's not massively in depth, it's very easy to follow, especially if you have an MSI motherboard. So once again, thanks to MSI for sponsoring today's video, and uh, we are going to be cracking on in uh, just a moment, but just before then, I'd like to ask you to subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so you're notified when I upload a new video. Don't forget to like and comment on this video as well. If you wanna comment um, about anything in today's video or if you need a bit of help with something then do let me know or if you've got questions about stability or whether you can use it on another motherboard or something like that then do reach out you can also see my guide on how to overclock the core i5 13600k which is perhaps a slightly better value option than the 14600k excellent overclocking guide already on my channel for that one you can see a link to that and a whole lot of stuff in the description below as well so that's it for the intro let's crack on with the video Right, so we are at the desktop then, and uh, we have to run through a few things first. So the software that you need is basically um, a whole bunch of things that will help you monitor the temperature, the frequency, and the voltage, as well as performing some stress tests. So over on the left, we can see a program called CPUZ, and I should mention that all these programs are free to download and you can see links to them in the description down below. So first one up is CPU-Z and this is a great program for monitoring your processors frequency and voltage. So down here we can see that we've got the core speed 
And a really useful tip that I can give you is if you right click on that, you can actually see the frequencies of all of the processor cores um, on your processor. So here we can see that our Core i5-14600K has got a whole bunch of E cores and P cores. It's the P cores that we're going to be focusing on today because they have by far the biggest impact on your processor performance. So out of the box, you'll probably find them running at about 5.3 gigahertz on this processor. We want to increase that later on to get more performance. And uh, the other thing that you want to make uh, make note of in uh, CPU-Z is the processor voltage. So that will go generally up and down depending on whether your processor is under load or not at stock speed. We're going to be manually inputting a figure in there to make it run cooler um, and uh, actually running a lot lower voltage than it runs at stock speed for a number of reasons, which we'll get to in just a moment. So the next bit of software you need is Core Temp that will allow you to do like a before and after measurement of the processor temperature. Obviously, it's going to be pretty hot when we start and hopefully a lot cooler when we finish, when we have our final settings. So the um, last bit of software that we need is Cinebench. Now, this is my preferred stress test program for a basic overclock. You can use other software. Prime95 is also something that I've run these uh, the overclock settings here through. Um, I just prefer Cinebench because I've actually found it picks up errors a lot faster than Prime95 does in a lot of situations. And I find that for a basic overclock, if you're then going to switch back to gaming or something like that, Cinebench is absolutely fine. For those of you that want a, uh, a much more strenuous long-term stress test, then you can use Prime95 on the small FFT test or something like that with AVX instructions disabled. But for the uh, those of us that are probably going into this for the first time in this video, Cinebench is absolutely fine. So what we will do first is basically get our before any tweaking result. So what we want to do is just go up here and we want to go to the advanced benchmark because this will actually give us a score when the benchmark is complete so we can actually use that to compare against our um, overclocked settings because we do want to get more performance out of this as well as a cooler running processor. Now what I should add is that as I mentioned a couple of minutes ago we do have three different sets of tweaking here today. Number one we're going to look at a very 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 easy thing that you can do to actually drastically reduce the thermals of your um, Intel 12th, 13th or 14th generation processor. So not just the 14600K, there's a single setting you can change to, dr to drastically reduce the amount of voltage that it uses at stock speed and in turn drastically reduce the temperatures as well. So if you're finding that your processor is running really hot, 90, 100 degrees, there is an easy way to cut 10 even 15 degrees from that temperature under load. And we're going to look at that in just a moment. We are then going to move on to an overclock that you can apply if you've got really good cooling, such as an AIO liquid cooler or a very high-end air cooler or even custom liquid cooling, which is what I'm using here today. There are some slightly higher overclocking settings that we'll be going on to in the first part of the video. And then we will be moving on to the final set of um, basically settings that you can use. And that is aimed at uh, people with more modest cooling or those that just kind of want to start out with something um, a bit more low down, a bit more achievable, but still get a real world performance increase and a cooler running processor. So don't forget to check the description below for the timestamp so you can fast forward if you just want to go for the easier cooler option. If you've got a modest air cooler like a, a mid range um, something like a Cooler Master Hyper 212 or something like that, which I used uh, in this test to check the uh, temperatures on that final overclock setting. If you've got really, really good cooling, then you can use my uh, other set of results with a slightly higher frequency of 5.6 gigahertz. The lower one is uh, 5.5 gigahertz. So you want to aim for the 5.6 gigahertz one if you've got really, really good cooling. And um, obviously, if you just want to see lower temperature results, then uh, we're going to do that first. So to start with, though, we want our before temperature and uh, results. So we're going to click on the multi-core test, and we are just going to let this run through. It's a pretty fast processor, so this really doesn't take long and um, just gives us an idea about what our processor is doing and the temperatures that it's running at. So we can see here in core temp, one of the um, hot running cores is already up to um, 89 degrees C. We're probably going to hit 90 degrees C. Uh, before this stress test is over, or we certainly would do if we were running a, uh, a longer stress test, for example. So 89 degrees C, that is pretty warm, considering I've got a, um, a pretty elaborate custom liquid cooling system here with two 240 millimeter radiators. So 
We didn't quite top 90 degrees, but if the stress test had been running for a little bit longer, we probably would have done. So this is a very hot running processor out of the box, and this is just the mid-range one. This is the Core i5, so we want to get this running a whole lot cooler. Now, if we just uh, run that test again, we'll take a look at the frequencies. So as we can see here, stock speed with our motherboard, we have a uh, frequency across all of the cores here. Um, of 5.3 gigahertz. So you might find that the results here kind of go up and down a little bit um, depending on how your motherboard is set at stock speed. So um, we've got all of the cores um, sitting at the same frequency of 5.3. So we obviously want to increase that by the time we get to the um, uh, the end of this video and we've overclocked. So we're coming up the home straight on a second run now then and we can see that yet yeah, we've got a 90 degree temperature on one of the cores so running pretty toasty. So that is what we've got. We've got a, uh, a score as well up here so we're going to compare that score against our results later on and um, we can see how the score with a slightly higher uh, overclock or frequency results in uh, the score that we get in Cinebench. So just over 24,000 here. Hopefully we can see a higher result later on. So what we're going to do now is head into the BIOS and we're going to check out our first little bit of tweaking. Here we are in the BIOS and uh, what you want to do is to press F7 if you haven't already to enter advanced mode and that will bring you at least on an MSI motherboard to a page that looks like this. So we want to head into the OC section first and uh, the first setting that we want to play with is the we need to head down to the advanced CPU configuration uh, because we want to find a little hidden setting in here that um, has re has been in the news recently and um, I think I might have just scrolled past it there the first time so we're just going to head down a little bit and um, so here we are it's called CEP support now this is current excursion protection and MSI has actually just updated its BIOSes recently for uh, for its motherboards, and by default, this setting is now turned off. Now, what CEP does is it allows your processor to draw a lot more power than it otherwise would in an attempt to make it run at maximum speed without any kind of stability issues or anything like that. Now, it's kind of like a fail-safe, really. Um, it's, you don't really need it. Um, and that's the reason why MSI has actually disabled it in its latest BIOSes, because it is the key uh, reason why 14th gen processors especially are running at such high temperatures. So what they actually do is uh, they actually just disable this off the bat. So that is what we are going to do here. Now, if you want to do this yourself, it's really, really easy because all you have to do is download the latest BIOS for your MSI motherboard and it will actually disable this option automatically. So all you need to do is update your EFI to the latest version. And uh, you, if you don't know how to do that, you can actually follow my recent BIOS guide. And uh, in there, you will find a very simple step-by-step -step guide on how to update your BIOS. Now, um, once you've updated it, what you want to do is head into the OC section and then find the advanced CPU configuration, as we've done here. And just go down here and make sure this setting is turned off. It, where I've actually re-enabled it to get the results that we just saw, which are akin to what you would have with an, if you've got an older BIOS on your motherboard. So we are now going to disable CEP support, and we're going to see what difference that has to our motherboard. So we are going to... Um, just head out of the BIOS now and we're going to save that setting first by pressing F10 and then we're going to head back into Windows and see what impact that had on our processor. Here we are at the desktop again and we've loaded up all our software and what we want to do is remember last time uh, what we had in terms of temperatures and everything else. So we had a temperature, peak temperature on the second benchmark run of about 90 degrees so we want to see a lower result than that today and we also saw a frequency of 5.3 gigahertz across all of our P cores, and we had a score of just over 24,000. So we don't want any of the performance or frequency to, to be lower, but what we do want to see here is a lower temperature because that's what MSI has promised by disabling uh, CEP. So we are going to go ahead and uh, click on the advanced benchmark option again. That will actually give us a uh, benchmark score at the end. And then we click on the multi-core test. So let's have a look at these temperatures. And uh, yep, looks like it is a lot cooler. So remember, we were instantly well above 80 degrees. 
and uh, we eventually hit 90 degrees in the second benchmark run. So we're uh, about halfway through the first benchmark run now, nowhere near 80 degrees yet. So I don't even think that we're going to hit above 80 degrees, um, even in the second benchmark run that we're going to do in a moment. So um, as we can see, the frequencies exactly the same, 5.3 gigahertz across all of the P cores. And uh, we have a benchmark result of 24,000 834. Now that is actually higher than what we got last time and that is probably because the processor is running a little bit cooler so um, the frequencies aren't, aren't playing around even though they are kind of set to fixed as standard. So we're actually, we've are actually we actually got a slightly higher result here than we did last time. So our CPU didn't even top 80 degrees. If you look down here we've actually got a peak temperature of 79 degrees C. So just changing one setting in the BIOS not even anything to do with frequency. We've just reduced the processor's ability to tap into much higher voltages and get itself all hot under the collar. We've actually increased the performance without doing anything else other than just applying that single setting. And if, if you just update your BIOS, that setting will probably even be disabled as standard. So what I'm going to do now is just run through a second benchmark result to see what temperature uh, we get up to this time. So remember, before, on the second benchmark run, we hit, I think, 90 degrees. So we haven't even topped 80 degrees yet. So we're up to about 79 degrees again. And again, looking at the frequency, we have about 5.3 gigahertz then. Um, so everything kind of staying rock solid on the frequencies. We don't need to worry about that. And uh, we're coming up the home straight with the benchmark now. Still haven't got over 79 degrees C. So we've got a, an 11 degree drop in the temperatures, and we haven't even started overclocking yet. <laughs> so, and again, we've got a, a higher score than we did originally, so 24,341. So we've already um, started increasing the score and we haven't even increased the frequency yet. So that's a fantastic result just by tweaking one setting. So MSI, absolutely right to introduce um, the CEP support and uh, disabling it basically, because you're not really gonna be losing any performance, um, certainly not in uh, any Cinebench R23, no, definitely not, not gonna be losing any in your games. The only thing you're, you're gonna be doing is making your processor run a lot cooler. So um, that's a great start. So what we're gonna do now is actually go ahead and some do some overclocking. But for those of you that just wanna get a cooler running processor, you don't wanna overclock or anything, anything, anything like that then definitely download the latest BIOS and uh, run through the steps that we've just been through to locate um, CEP support in your in your motherboard's BIOS and make sure it is disabled and uh, that will allow you to have your processor running a heck of a lot cooler. So we're going to go back into the BIOS and do some overclocking now. Here we are back in the BIOS and uh, we'll want to go into the OC section. Again, if you can't see the OC section, then you'll want to tap on F7 to enter advanced mode and you should find it here. And uh, you should have a similar option in your uh, motherboard um, EFI if you've got a different manufacturer, but I can't guarantee that the settings that we use here will, will work on your motherboard because each motherboard is kind of a little bit different. So anyway, if we go into the OC section, what we'll do first, is uh, tap in a picor ratio of 56 and this will give us a CPU frequency as we can see just above where the red line is at the moment of five uh, or 5600 megahertz or 5.6 gigahertz. So what we want to do now is go down to the uh, the voltage. Now what you can do if you don't want to mess around with, with the voltage you can just leave it with um, the option that we looked at earlier uh, a CEP support just leave it um, and, uh, disabled and you will probably be able to get a pretty good result at 5.6 gigahertz. Um, you probably will see the processor running a little bit hotter than, uh, than it otherwise would. Um, so that's the reason why we're actually going to go and manually tweak the voltage at the moment because I saw a voltage when we when I went into, went into Windows with the, just the multiplier up to 56, I saw a CPU voltage close to 1.3 volts, which is a fair bit higher than what we want to do. So I don't really want to do that because it's kind of just uh, wasting everybody's time. Um, so what we want to do is just go down here to the CPU core voltage. And if we type in 1.25, and uh, we want to set the CPU core voltage mode to override as well. So they're the only settings that we need to tweak. So 1.25 uh, 
on the CPU core voltage. We want to set the core voltage mode to override, which means it's uh, fixed at that voltage. And we also want to head up here to the P core ratio and set it to 56. That's all you need to do. Follow those settings exactly. You don't need to touch anything else. And uh, what we're going to do now is head back in to the uh, to the desktop. But first, what you want to do is tap F10 to save those settings. As you can see there, they're all the things that we've done. It gives a nice handy um, update on all the things that we've tweaked. So if you see anything else in there, just bear in mind that you might have uh, accidentally touched another setting. You want to just press F6 to load optimized defaults and start again. And uh, we're going to go back into Windows. So here we are in Windows again. We've got all our software loaded up. And the first thing we need to remember to do is to switch to the advanced benchmark mode in Cinebench. So we get a score at the end. And uh, we want to check that our overclock has been applied first. So if you go to CPU-Z down in the bottom left-hand corner, you go to the core speed and just right-click on it and make sure that all of the P-Cores are running at 5.6 gigahertz, which is what they are. And you can also see that our voltage has been applied. So we've got a 1.25 volts uh, fixed voltage there. Now, if you want to go into some more advanced overclocking, you can look at guides on adaptive voltage and offsets and all those kind of things. That just mean, allows the processor to um, to increase and decrease the voltage as it, as it sees fit. You will probably use a little less power over time, but today I really want to focus on the guys out there that just need as fewer settings as possible. And uh, so this isn't an in-depth overclocking guide. It's just tweaking a couple of settings to get a real-world performance increase. So that is what we are all about today. Um, so we are going to check and see what temperatures we get. And uh, we're going to see the extra performance boost as well for our overclock. So this overclock, though, as I mentioned earlier, 5.6 gigahertz is the one that you want to be aiming for if you've got really good processor cooling. So if you've got an all-in-one liquid cooler or a, a really, really good air cooler, that's probably uh, 50, 60 bucks at least or more, then you should be okay with this overclock. If you find that the temperatures are a little bit too hot, if you're getting temperatures well over 95 degrees C, then you will probably want to try the overclock that we're going to looking at that we're going to look at next, where we use a slightly lower um, frequency and a lower voltage as well. So you'll still see a performance increase. We're still having a couple hundred megahertz added on top of our stock speed. Uh, performance, but it will just uh, rein in the temperatures a little bit compared to the one that we're using here. So we'll go ahead and run the multi-core benchmark and see what score we get and also the temperatures. So temperatures, we've um, already topped 80 degrees, but we are running 300 megahertz higher than the stock speed performance of our processor, and we have manually reduced the voltage as well. So on the uh, with the custom liquid cooling we've got at the moment so we've hit 84 degrees c guess we'll probably hit 85 at uh, at some point but considering we've got a pretty high overclock on this processor at the moment that's uh, that's a pretty uh, pretty decent result and you'll probably see a very very similar result if you've got a uh, a large air cooler or a um, custom uh, a large aio liquid cooler as well so if we just um have a look at the Cinebench result, you'll see that it's um, over a thousand points higher than where we were at the start. So we got just over 24,000 points at stock speed. We're now um, well on the way to um, getting 25 and a half thousand points. So that's a, uh, a pretty awesome result there. And um, you'll definitely see um, some performance increases in, uh, in multi-threaded applications as well as lightly threaded applications such as games. So the main benefit, though, is that we are running a much cooler frequency, uh, much cooler temperature. So we're actually running six degrees cooler than our processor did at stock speed, even though it's now running faster. So this is a, a great result here. So what we're going to do now is uh, head back into the BIOS and we are going to see um, what we can do about reducing these temperatures further by just slightly reducing the overclock but offering up a much much lower processor voltage. So let's go ahead and do that. Here we are again in the BIOS and uh, this time we are going to be setting the CPU multiplier to 55 to give us a CPU frequency of 5.5 gigahertz or 5,500 megahertz. So we're still running 25, uh, still running um, 200 megahertz higher than what your processor will be running at, at stock speed. And uh, we are also going to go down and reduce the voltage 
um, even further. Now, I did try 1.2 volts here, but that proved to be just a little bit unstable in my extended uh, stress tests. So um, it, I think I just it came up with an error after about 15 minutes or something like that. So I would just want to make sure that the settings I'm giving you guys are um, as stable as possible. So we are going to go with 1.21 volts. So what we'll do now is just press F10 and we will go back into Windows and we can see what uh, what results we have here in terms of temperatures and performance. So here we are back at the desktop for the final time and we've loaded up all our software and we're gonna click on the advanced benchmark mode in Cinebench so we get a score at the end. And uh, as we can see, our processor is now running at 5.5 uh, 5 gigahertz or uh, 5,500 megahertz across all of the P cores, which is exactly what we wanted. And our processor voltage is about 1.21 volts, which is exactly where we wanted that as well. So we're gonna go ahead and run the benchmark and we're gonna see what results we get here in terms of thermals and performance. And uh, as we can see, we're sort of mid 70s here, 79 degrees. So we've just topped um, 80. So yeah, we might get up to about 81 or something after uh, a couple of benchmark runs because uh, the temperature tends to uh, peak sometimes and it kind of drops back a little bit in, uh, in Cinebench. As we can see, our processor is uh, fixed at 5.5 on the peak course, so uh, that's not budging anywhere. So we are running a whole lot cooler than we were at the start and we're still running a, um, a performance advantage here. So what have we got on the score? We've got uh, 25... 357. So that's actually pretty much the same as what we saw um, at 5.6. So the, the score does does vary quite a bit, but we're obviously um, still way above where we were, just above 24,000. So we've um, just between 5.5 and 5.6 gigahertz, we obviously got a much higher result the first time we ran the benchmark um, we're at 5.6, but there is usually um, a couple of hundred points of variation in this result. So what we can do is actually just go ahead and run it again and see what we get this time. And um, again, we're probably not even going to top 80 degrees here. So if you imagine if uh, if you've got a mid-range air cooler, you might see a result that's maybe um, 10, uh, 12 degrees warmer than this, maybe running at 90, 92 degrees. Uh, that's absolutely fine because you're going to you're probably not going to be running um, with all of the cores under stra under full load for extended periods of time. If you're just gaming, you won't even see anything near these temperatures. And we've just, just topped 84, 81 degrees C there with our overclock. So our processor running a lot cooler than it did at stock speed. And um, yeah, the second result, a little bit lower. So 24,765, but that's still a huge amount um, higher than where we were at stock speed. So Overall, a great result here, much, much lower temperatures, and we even get a performance boost as well. So don't forget, if you just want to lower the temperatures, start off by updating your BIOS, and uh, that might even uh, fix your uh, your hot running Core i5 4600K uh, just by disabling the current excursion protection, the CEP option in the BIOS, which is now disabled by default. You can also go into the advanced processor section and make sure that is disabled as well as we showed you how to do earlier. Then if you've got good cooling, if you've got a high-end air cooler or an all-in-one liquid cooler or even custom liquid cooling, you want to try my 5.6 gigahertz overclock with a 1.25 volt V-Core, you'll get a lot more performance and a much cooler running processor. And then what you can do is if you've got a mid-range air cooler or you just want a little overclock but a much cooler running processor, what you can do is set the voltage to 1.21 volts. That's probably lower than you're going to see with um, it just with just by disabling CEP. Um, but you're going to see a much lower temperature and also a higher um, performance than you would have seen at stock speed as well because we're now running at 5.5 gigahertz and not 5.3. So three very easy um, tweaks there to get your processor running cooler and faster. And I'd like to thank MSI for sponsoring today's video and I'll be back with some more how-to guides very, very soon. Don't forget, I've got other overclocking videos out there for the Core i5-13600K, which is probably an even better processor than the 14600K in terms of value. And I've also got another video guide out there about how to overclock AMD CPUs as well. Now, one um, little proviso, I say that you can use these, uh, these options uh, settings on other motherboards from other motherboard manufacturers, but because they vary quite a bit in terms of the voltages, the voltages that they apply, 
etc etc they the results might not be stable but as a baseline you can probably use them if you end up with stability results you might just need to increase the voltage a little bit or reduce the frequency a little bit as well but it's these these settings are perfectly safe to use on any motherboard that supports 12th 13th or 14th gen cpus so again thanks for watching today and i'll be back very soon Thank <laughs> you.